Our main focus in this unit is going to be the specific ways that humans get energy from the environment and the specific power stations that we use to extract that energy. And we're going to start with fossil fuels and fossil fuel stations. At the beginning of every lecture about the energy sources, I'm going to open with this graph, which shows you where the energy sources are as a percentage of the global energy production. Fossil fuels are far and away the most commonly used type of energy source. These are basic facts that you have to know about fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are any energy source formed from the remains of living organisms like animals and mostly plants. That's why they're called fossil fuels. They are literally fossils, um, decaying organic matter that over time was exposed to a lot of pressure to the point where the carbon was kind of extracted from the rest of the chemicals that made up the animal or plant. And the main types of fossil fuels that we're going to worry about are oil, coal, and natural gas. The other main fact to know about fossil fuels is that most of the global economy relies on them for energy, and at the same time, most governments are trying to phase out fossil fuels with new technology and policies to prevent climate change from becoming too bad. These are the advantages and disadvantages of fossil fuels. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I definitely recommend you copy them down. Just as a reminder, this isn't meant to say that there are trade-offs equally good and bad for each type of energy source. Some energy sources definitely have a lot more serious disadvantages than advantages and vice versa. One disadvantage that I will point out is that fossil fuels are said to be non-renewable. This means that we cannot make more fossil fuels. We can't renew our supply of fossil fuels. So the word non-renewable just means we can't get more of it after we've used it up. In comparison, solar energy is normally talked about as being renewable energy because it doesn't matter whether we put up a solar panel or not, we'll always have the same amount of sunshine. This is a chart showing the different steps of a fossil fuel power plant and how energy is transformed inside of the plant. It starts with chemical energy and fossil fuels being released as thermal energy in air and water. Basically, this just means we're burning the fossil fuels to turn the chemical potential energy inside into thermal energy. The thermal energy is used to heat water and turn the water into steam, which moves very fast when it's compressed. And the kinetic energy of the steam causes the turbine of a generator to spin, which spins a magnet around a coil of wire generating electricity. This is actually how almost all of our electricity is generated. Almost all of the power stations that we're going to look at in this unit generate electricity by spinning a magnet around a coil of wire, and there are just different ways that they have of doing it. For fossil fuels, the way that they spin that wire is by heating up water, turning it into steam, and then causing the steam to impact a turbine, which makes it spin and makes the magnet spin in the generator, creating electricity. It's really important when talking about fossil fuels to understand exactly why they remain so popular, and the main reason is their energy density. There's no other type of material that can contain so much energy in so little space, and that's so easily retrievable. Thinking about gas as an example, if we were to put the amount of gas that the average car can hold into a cubic container, that cubic container would just be 1.2 feet on each side. That's an incredibly small amount of material. And just that small amount of material contains enough energy to propel that car forward for 300 miles before it needs a refill of that same material. That's really crazy to think about. There's not really another type of material that we can access as easily as fossil fuels, transport as easily as fossil fuels, and extract energy from as easily as fossil fuels that also just contains so much energy compared to how little mass they have. This leads to two important definitions. The energy density of a substance is a measurement of the amount of energy stored in a material per unit of volume. So it's a measurement of how much energy an object can store per volume of a material, or energy over volume. And in comparison, the specific energy of a material is a measurement of the amount of energy stored per unit of mass. So it's energy divided by mass. Both of these are extremely important to understand for fossil fuels because fossil fuels have incredibly high energy density and incredibly high specific energy. As an example, the energy density of oil is 40,500 megajoules per meter cubed. This means that every cubic meter of oil contains 40,500 megajoules of energy. That's an incredible amount, and it can be stored in a relatively small space. So that's the appeal of using fossil fuels. The specific energy of oil is 45 megajoules per kilogram, and that means that every kilogram of oil contains 45 megajoules of energy. These are going to be extremely important for understanding this unit, so just make sure that you have copied down whatever you need to copy down that you don't already understand. We're going to do a few example problems with fossil fuels, and you're going to notice throughout all of these problems, and indeed most of the problems in this unit, that the main challenge is understanding how to convert units. If you can convert units well, that's going to be the main focus of this unit. You just have to understand how to get from one unit to another in specific types of power stations. In example number one, the energy density of oil is 40,500 megajoules per meter cubed. A standard barrel of oil contains 0.16 meters cubed of oil. If an oil power station needs to generate 20 megawatts for eight hours and is 
30 percent efficient how many barrels of oil will it need to burn so that was a lot it sounds like a lot of physics jargon honestly so we need a way of breaking it down Basically, what this question is saying is we're running this power plant at 20 megawatts, which means 20 megajoules per second. That's how much energy we need to create for eight hours straight, and it's 30% efficient. So we need to start by figuring out exactly how much energy we need to put into this power plant and then use that amount to find how many barrels of oil we'll need to put into the power plant because we have a way of converting from the amount of oil used to the amount of energy generated. So I'm going to start with that 20 megawatts. I know that that's equal to 20 megajoules per second and I want to know how much energy was used over the full eight hours. So if every second it generates 20 megajoules of energy, I know that I have to multiply the power by the time to get the total energy that was created. And the time in this problem is eight hours. And because my first value uses seconds and my second value uses hours, I have to convert from hours into seconds. Using the factor label method, I'm going to put the unit that I want to get rid of in the denominator and the new unit in the numerator and then put numbers next to them, that makes the whole thing equal to 1. 60 minutes over 1 hour is equal to 1, because 60 minutes is equal to 1 hour. And then converting from minutes to seconds looks like this, and I'm then going to cancel out the hours, cancel out the minutes, cancel out the seconds, and I'm left with 576,000 megajoules of energy. That's how much energy we need to get out of this power plant. But we're definitely not done yet, because that's the energy out, and we need to know how much energy to put in. So if the plant is 30% efficient, that means the 576,000 megajoules is the useful energy we're getting out, so that number is 30% of what we need to put into the plant. Writing that as an equation, 576,000 megajoules is equal to 0.3, the efficiency, times the original energy. It's 0.3 or 30% of the original energy. Solving for the original energy gets 1,920,000 megajoules. So that's how much energy we need to put into the plant to get the useful electric energy out of the plant. I can see how to convert from the amount of energy to the amount of meters cubed of oil, because I have the energy density. Every 40,500 megajoules of energy is equal to one meter cubed of oil that you burn to get it. So converting, I want to get rid of megajoules, so I put that in the opposite part of the fraction, and I want meters cubed, so I put that in the other part of the fraction, and I know that for every one meter cubed, according to the energy density, there's 40,500 megajoules of energy. And I now want to go from meters cubed to barrels, because the goal of this question is to understand how many barrels of oil we need to use. So I'm putting meters cubed in the denominator now because I want to get rid of that, and I'm putting barrels in the opposite side. And I know that for every one barrel of oil, there's 0.16 meters cubed of oil. So that's a conversion between those two things. As long as the numerator and denominator are equal to each other, we can multiply by that fraction. Canceling things out gets me a final value of 297 barrels of oil. So over the course of the eight hours, we're going to need to burn 297 barrels to produce that electricity for this power plant. This is example number two. The specific energy of coal is 27 megajoules per kilogram. If a coal plant is 28% efficient and needs to run for nine hours, how much power will it be generating if it uses 750 kilograms of coal? So we need to start by figuring out how much power is going into this power plant. And I know that I can do that by using the amount of coal that's being burned. So if 750 kilograms of coal is being burned, I can convert that to an energy by multiplying by its specific energy. There are 27 megajoules per one kilogram of coal. Canceling that out gets me a total energy of 20,250 megajoules. So that's how much energy is contained in this coal altogether. And because the plant is 28% efficient, it's going to be able to retrieve only 28% of that energy inside of the coal. So 0.28 times 20,250 megajoules is equal to 5,670 megajoules. So that's how much the plant is going to get out of this coal as useful electrical energy. And so the power is going to be that total energy over the total time, which is going to be 5,670 megajoules, the total it gets from the coal, over nine hours, the total time that it has to run. And because power is always measured in terms of seconds, I need to convert those hours into seconds. Multiplying this by a conversion factor, I'm going to put hours in the numerator to cancel it out, and minutes in the denominator because I want to go down in my time, so there's one hour in every 60 minutes. Multiplying by another conversion factor to get rid of the minutes, I put that in the numerator, seconds in the denominator, and so I get one minute over 60 seconds. Canceling these things out gets me a final value of 0.175 megajoules per second, or 0.175 megawatts. So that would be the power of this power station if it used 750 kilograms of coal over a nine-hour day, and it's 28% efficient. 
There are definitely different ways of writing these answers. For example, megawatts are equal to 10 to the sixth watts. So rewriting this number could get me 175 kilowatts, which is 1,000 watts, or 175,000 watts. Those are all possibilities. You could also use scientific notation and say this is 1.75 times 10 to the fifth watts. Those will all be acceptable. I'll make it clear what I'm expecting when I'm expecting something specific. Just a note. An object's actual density, its actual just physical density, is symbolized by the Greek letter rho. An object's density is equal to its mass over its volume, or rho is equal to mass over volume. Students sometimes get that V confused with velocity, but it means volume here. Notice that we can actually translate between energy density and specific energy using this equation. If we divide energy density by specific energy, you'll notice that that equation actually cancels out to be mass over volume, so that's equal to rho. So if you have the actual physical density of the object, you can also use that density to find one or the other, either the energy density or the specific energy, if you know the other. And that's what you need to know about fossil fuel stations.